good morning and thank you. I am Corey Smith. I'm the advocacy director for the Enough Project, the project to end genocide and crimes against humanity. And I'm very pleased to announce the forthcoming release of the Not On Our Watch Christian Companion by Greg LaFell and Bill Mefford that expands on the New York Times bestseller, Not On Our Watch, The Mission to End Genocide in Darfur by actor Don Cheadle and Africa expert and co-founder of Enough, John Prendergast. Don Cheadle and I wrote Not On Our Watch, the, uh, this book, for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that genocide is a, is a crime with, with no equal. Uh, it is the ultimate crime against humanity, and it requires uh, a response from uh, human beings who prioritize their principle and prioritize their faith. The second reason we wrote it was that for the first time in, in human history, there was developing a mass movement of people against a genocide while it was still happening. Our purpose with the companion is to provide biblical reflections and a theological and ethical point of view that Christians can use to think through their own involvement in the movement uh, for Darfur to end the genocide. We have tried very hard to make sure that we can write something that speaks to the entire Christian community, because as we know, uh, Christians are not monolithic. This, this is Chris Erlinger, National Council Reporter. Why do you think this, this movement has been so broad-based? In this case, three particular ethnic groups in Darfur have been targeted for extinction by government and government-associated militias. The idea that these people would be targeted for elimination on the basis of their uh, identity is something that I think really speaks to people. Secondly, I think that um, as, as I've traveled around the country, I, I think that as, as more and more communities learn about what is happening, whether they're church-based, synagogue-based, mosque-based, school-based, or organizational-based, um, they feel like there is something that they should do, that they must do, and that if they act, that there is a chance that those that have been targeted on the basis of their identity can be protected. We actually are very fortunate that this companion is being released now uh, purely by circumstance. For the first time, we finally have a mediator, a chief mediator that has been appointed to deal with the Darfur crisis uh, that unites the United Nations and the African Union and the rest of the international community. So getting behind a, a peace process that will deal with the issues that fun are fundamental to why there is a genocide in Darfur at the same time as finally and propitiously the, an element of accountability has been introduced through this uh, uh, and, uh, work to indict the, the president of Sudan by the International Criminal Court. So you have the beginnings of accountability and you have the beginnings of a peace process. Into that breach steps this Christian companion, and I think couldn't have been better timed purely by f good fortune. Uh, this is Cynthia Astell with the United Methodist Nexus. Um, you mentioned the book as, as a tool for connecting individuals and churches uh, with people in Darfur and in other genocidal situations. Can, can you explain how uh, you intend to accomplish that? One of the things that we intentionally structured into the book is kind of a step-by-step -step process for becoming politically active in this particular issue. And so the book is arranged as what we call an action reflection kind of format where we reflect on the issue but then talk specifically about action steps that can be taken. At the end of the book, we have uh, a series of, of uh, actual action steps to follow as well as a section on resources to connect with all kinds of, of different organizing and informational parts of the Darfur movement. 
But very intentionally, we want to walk people who use this book through what we call a, a process of becoming active or an activist kind of process, um, thinking that people may be learning for the first time what it means to become an activist and not simply a well-meaning person who might contribute money to a particular cause. And so some of the steps we go through are what we call uh, awareness and awakening, uh, helping people to think about that the story of Darfur, tell the story, repeat it, until it forms a, a sense of consciousness, consciousness in their mind where they become convicted, you know, to, to use, you know, a religious, uh, you know, perspective, that something is wrong here and then we have an obligation to do it. As far as hearing the stories of, of uh, folks and connecting with people who are directly uh, either impacted or involved in the, um, the process of, of uh, bringing peace to Darfur, we, tried, we wanted to make sure we stayed away from a book that was an abstract theological detachment that allowed people to, say, to, to stay safely tucked away in classrooms or Sunday school rooms or whatever and just think about Darfur. We wanted to bring and try and facilitate as much as we can through a book actual engagement. And I think the most powerful part is not the theological reflection. The most powerful parts is, I think are, are two, and one, as Greg mentioned, are, are the, the steps that people will take, and we certainly hope and pray that people will take them seriously and follow through. But also within each, ses within each uh, session is a personal story. It starts off in section two, uh, in session two with hearing from uh, Daoud Ibrahim Ari, who is a Darfurian who has now been resettled in the United States, and then it goes through, there's uh, reflections there, personal stories from aid workers, from people who helped, uh, were peacekeepers, from Senator Brownback, and I think one of my favorite ones, not just because she's United Methodist, but because she's an ordinary person who did extraordinary things, and that's in the last session, that was Beth Riley. So in a way, as much as you can with a book, we tried to, and following, I think, the good example in the Not On Her Watch book, Try to make it as personal as possible, engaging as possible, and including narratives of people who either were directly impacted uh, by this, uh, by genocide, or who are uh, directly involved in bringing peace to Darfur. The, the objective is to build a permanent constituency of people cutting across faiths and, 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 um, and uh, ideologies. And, and partisan politics that is committed to uh, confronting genocide when it happens and preventing it when we can. Um, ultimately, I think it, it requires more than just policymakers doing their job, but rather an, an expectation, to build an expectation amongst people who care, particularly faith-based communities, that, there's a, that, the, that the United States will do all it can I think the thing that's important about this companion and the book, Not On Our Watch, is that there's hope. Uh, there's a lot of good news. It's empowering when you read these vignettes of the humanitarian aid worker, of the Darfurian refugee, of Beth Riley. Uh, it's really empowering. And that's one thing that we really hope comes out of this companion and the website, Darfur Christian Action, is empowerment. Danny Howell from First Broad Street United Methodist Church hosts an annual conference. I just want to say I applaud this book and the opportunity that it brings to the table. Uh, I hope I'm on board with you guys and that I am going to encourage our United Methodists in our area to take this to bed with them each night. Uh, we live in a society where we uh, try to, to settle our issues before we lay our head down. And across the world, that's not possible. And we need to be a part of that nightly and daily. And uh, so I applaud your effort. Uh, Jenny Higgins from Holston as well. I'd like to segue to uh, Danny's conversation to say that well, the amazing thing is that they probably have given us more hope for our own society if we can be transformational here. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a blessing both ways.